All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Collection Reflection. I am your host, Tim Williams. You may recognize me from such shows as Movies for Dumb Guys. And this week, we're going to be talking to a friend of mine who goes by the moniker Killer Pizza, and he collects Blu-rays, uh, mostly horror Blu-rays, and does YouTube reviews of them. And we will be... Ray. I know him as Ray. Ray, how are you today? Uh, not too bad. Unfortunately, it's going to have to stay that way so we can hear you. Yeah. Again, anybody watching this, uh, we are the guinea pigs for the Zoom deal and, uh, for the podcast. So, uh, just bear with us and, uh, we will hopefully get through this. Um, so Ray, uh, First thing that I wanted to ask you is um, if you remember the first horror movie that had an impact on you. First movie that had an impact on me? First horror movie that had an impact oh, on yeah. yeah, that's crazy because I know we've never talked about this before. But uh, the very <laughs> first ones that I remember were like, for some reason, The Exorcist was such a creepy movie. Because I've seen so many when I was young. That one stood out. Of all time. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Have, What's that? So you've watched The Exorcist recently? Oh, no, no. I meant like when I was a little kid. I, I probably watched it when I was like four years old. Okay. Yeah, because I was going to say, I, I tried to watch it now, and it, it does not, to me, it does not hold up. Uh, I could see that, but for me, at least me personally, all the typical kind of stuff, that stuff kind of spooks me out. I don't like a lot of movies in that way. Okay. You know, yeah. Especially from back in the day. It's kind of one of the originators, but... It just... Say, yeah. It's, oh, I was just going to say, to me, the special effects don't hold up. Um, and I, I hate to say it, it almost comes off as cheesy and almost humorous to me now. Um, I agree with you, though. When I was younger, when I was younger, it was terrifying. But um, anyway, that's just my two cents on that. But uh, I, I honestly haven't watched it. And it's kind of, kind of the view I've had for a minute. You know, yeah. Like when stuff gets like sonic like that, and I'm not a big fan of movies like that. Like Hellraiser or something. Creepy as hell. Yeah. But uh, you, you asked the movie that got me into it. Like I was saying, I was born in 88. Uh, talked about the Tom Savini. Make of Night of the Living Dead, George Romero's original movie, which everyone knows Tom Savini did a lot of effects. And Night of the Living Dead, I think Dawn and Day, right? The first three. Yeah. But so like him getting the blessing to do the uh, his directorial debut for the remake. I mean, I know you're a fan of the movie. Uh, I was born in '88, that came out in '90, which we talked about before. And I don't know if it was just because it was like the hottest movie, horror movie out at the time. And that's why. I see it. The re- you're you're talking the remake, you think you think that was because didn't it because didn't it kind of bomb at at the theater? Uh, honest, honestly, I didn't see it until <clears throat> excuse me. Honestly, I didn't see it until I was an adult. Um, but I instantly became a fan. But I I I want to say it did not do well at the theater. Yeah, I mean. I, I don't really know if it did or not. I, I didn't look into it enough like that. It's one of my favorites, but I mean, even with stuff like that, you know, like the cult following, the VHS tapes they sold alone, right? DVDs, you know. I mean, I don't know who that money went to, but you know, the movie made. I don't know if they made their money back. That had to have been a lower budget movie. There wasn't much to it, which a zombie movie shouldn't have much to it. No, and, and the reason, I, just just to mention it, the reason that they wanted to do that was because the original movie didn't make any money because they didn't. Uh, that's co- right. Copyright that's, it. That's that's why it's always one of the ones that they show on like the late night movies like a, and stuff because they don't like have, a public domain movie or something. Pu- yeah, it's it's in the public domain. So that's right, I, I did hear that. So Savini, that's why Savini wanted to remake it so that so the money would actually go to 
to the original filmmakers and and Romero himself. So I don't know how much money it made, but it just didn't seem like, um, to me, it didn't seem like it made a lot of money at the theater. I think it's found an audience now, though. Yeah. And, and like I said, I didn't see it until I was an adult, and I I, I was an immediate, immediate fan of it. Uh, and um, like I don't know if you watched last the last episode, but that's what I gave the guest. Um, yeah. I don't know if she got a chance to watch it yet or not, but. Um, Oh hell yeah! So that, as a blue as a Blu-ray collector, that's a movie that deserves like a really cool Blu-ray release too. You know, like a cool little you, like Screen Factory does good stuff. Arrow Video like they deserve like a good slipcover copy. Yeah. You know. Do you do you know how special features? Has it been released on the on Blu-ray yet? Yeah, I got it right here. Oh okay. All right, because I see the video. You can see it's a pretty generic. Kind of copy. There's okay. Really nothing to it. Yeah. Okay. Because I see the the VHS or the, I'm sorry the DVD, which is what I have, but uh, I see that for Tom cheap. Savini, uh, all around. Tom Savini commentary, a vignette, and then a, a trailer is all the special features there are. Okay. Uh, lame. What's that? Lame. <laughs> no, that's lame, man. That's why we collect, man. That's why. <laughs> that's why people stream. And that's why people collect. We want extra. You no. Know? Yeah, yeah. So physical copy. So did you immediately like like look going back to when you saw those movies? Did you immediately become a fan of the horror horror genre? Oh yeah, definitely. I was scared like as a little kid because I was a classic story of a kid that was way too young to be watching these horror movies. But I, I think right. at the same time, as impressed as I was by it and how much I could have been like affected by like this violence. I think at the same time I was so young, like I didn't really know what I was seeing, and I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll make this story short, but I've been asked this before when it comes to like, I'm a pro wrestler, as you know, that's how we met each other through independent wrestling, mm -hmm. and, and my love for pro wrestling and horror were born pretty much at the same time, because okay. back in the day, back in the day when you were good in school all week, like that's how it was at my house, I, it was me, my sister, and our, our single mom. If we were good all week, we'd go down to Videotron off M59 in Waterford, Michigan, and they used to have this deal, three movies, three nights, three dollars, all VHSs, mm -hmm. and they had the best wrestling selection, and that's how I kind of got into wrestling there, but my mom would get herself a movie, I'd get a wrestling tape or one of the Rocky movies, and then my <laughs> yeah. sister would always, my sister would always get like the most violent horror movie that her little brother shouldn't be watching. But we were yeah. tight as little kids, and okay. she was older, so I was forced into watching these movies with her. I remember <laughs> watching, like, Night of the Demons with her, and uh, which I recently rewatched Dolly Dearest. I bought it from Arrow Video, and that movie absolutely sucked, but she used to play that one. It used to scare the shit out of me. But, yeah, you mentioned that. You mentioned that on one of your uh, reviews, didn't you? Oh, it sucked. Yeah, it sucked. Okay. I, I, try not, I try not to say too much bad about bad movies, because I don't want to be too negative what I put out at least, but either way, my sister pretty much seen them all A to Z, was obsessed with them for whatever her reason was, yeah. she dragged me along with it, and then we would watch every horror movie every night, and then at like four in the morning, because I'm a little kid, at like five years old, four or five, I'd wake up and put the wrestling tape the VCR <laughs> on the VCR, and the, the TV was on the ground, I'd sit Indian style, with the volume on like two, and then I'd watch my wrestling, but before I got to that... I got thrown into this crazy world of uh, horror. Okay. Uh, now, have you, have you, did you ever consider doing, like, a horror gimmick uh, as far as your wrestling persona goes? That, that's the funniest thing, man. Cause I, the two of my closest friends, which were known as the Freebirds, shout out Freebirds, that uh, they all kind of know me as a big horror fan, but we always joke that, like, I'm not like what you would think a horror fan looks like. I'm not like a stereotype of a horror fan. I'm not like gothic. I don't want to be violent or have this bloody gimmick. I'm like actually the polar opposite. Right. It's like a lot of my other interests or how I look or how I act for whatever that means to anyone. But like, yeah, I never was a fan of like, I mean, more power to people that do that, like individuality and stuff. And I watch the damn movies. I think they look cool in the movies. But like, yeah, you know, black hair and leather jackets. I just never got into that kind I, of like I, I mean let's a, let's you know a, what I mean? 
Yeah, I mean, let's admit it. There's there's a ton of them out there, and oh, uh, yeah. I mean that that's one thing. I mean, it's uh, <laughs> it, it, it's just kind of been oversaturated somewhat as yeah, far as wrestling that. slash horror gimmicks. On the independent scene, especially, I would say. Mm-hmm. But uh, well, back back to the movies though. Um, now I know, or at least you've told me that the slasher genre is your favorite. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. Uh, why why would you why do you think that is? Well, I think there's like. A, well, first of all, you know, I want I want to flash back to the dark, dark horror kind of gimmicks and wrestlers. I must just say. I can't do a gimmick as good as a lot of the guys that do that type of gimmick, so more power to them in that sense. And it kind of relates to my taste in music or movies too. Where like I don't like the dark, dark stuff. Like like I said, I like Hellraiser one and two get really dark, and I like those kind of movies. Yeah. But I like mine more humanized. Okay. And I've all, on on my channel, I gripe about it all the time. I mean, obviously, like what you like, but I hear a lot of people complain when there's like comedy in a horror movie. Mm-hmm. And I think people exaggerate because there's obviously slapstick, comedy, and a horror, which kind of I could see the point of like making horror look like kind of a joke, just make it a comedy. Yeah. But I like when people seem real and they joke around because if like we hung out after this interview and a killer came after us the next night, <laughs> we met up at the pub or whatever, we'd be laughing and high fiving and joking. So why wouldn't it be right? Funny, and that's what I kind of like in a slasher. A lot of slashers are like that. They add that element. It almost seems like a rated R kind of raunchy comedy. Yeah. Then, but when it flips, the right slashers always have the characters flip like zero to one hundred. Treat it so seriously. Yeah. Because I feel that's humanized and realistic, and I relate more to that because, yeah, like what I was saying, it, especially most slashers take place within like a night or two. So that's kind right. of like a cool effect as well. I have way more reasons. Plus, all the best horror movies are slashers. So, so out of out of out of say Freddy, Jason, and Michael, who who would you say is your favorite? Uh, well, you know, I just ordered that Scream Factory. Uh, I do Friday the Thirteenth set, which is going to be awesome. Yeah. And in retrospect, I I didn't realize how many movies Jason had out. How many? How many? How many did he have? Twelve. Yeah, twelve total, but it was eight. Eight of his movies were released in the 80s. That's crazy. Yeah. And Halloween was kind of shut, cut off kind of quick, but I would consider Halloween my favorite. I okay. Just like Jason, I just like uh, Michael Myers as a killer more. Okay. Yeah. Like I, less is more quiet, quiet, right. cerebral kind of. In John Carpenter's score in the first movie, mm-hmm. where it's directing alone, it's like. Yeah. Did you like uh, Did you like the last Halloween? I loved it. Yeah, I did too. I, I saw it at the theater. I, I really liked it. I'm, I'm looking forward to the next one. Um, it had to be pushed back till, uh supposed to come out this October, right? But it's pushed back a year. Yeah. The virus. I, I, yep, I think so. Yeah, I was looking forward to some stuff coming out. I don't. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but yeah, there was quite a few that I was looking forward to coming out. But hey, it, yeah. is, it is what it is. I mean, hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll get back to more normalcy here pretty soon, but... Um, so, yeah. did, so obviously before you got into Blu-rays, because they weren't readily available until so many years ago, did, did you collect VHS tapes also or, or DVDs? Oh, yeah. I actually had the uh, Tom Savini remake on VHS. I bought it like when I was like 10. Oh, okay. From like a FYE in Westland Mall. So like, because I had to kind of think about this not too long ago, you know, not like I'm sitting here questioning why I collect. You know, as a collector, like, you think about collecting a lot. I watch a lot of videos about this type of stuff, and I kind of, like, you know when I'm going to be on your podcast, I try to think of, like, what was the origin of me collecting, and it's like, I realized I've been collecting ever since, ever since I was a kid. And it's not just movies. We, we had VHSs, DVDs, and back then, like, you were excited to get CDs, because they had, like, the booklets inside, they may have, like, oh, pictures yeah. and lyrics, and yeah, definitely. This is before the internet came around, and then at that point when DVDs came out, that was so cool, especially like we mentioned earlier, wrestling. If you like 
Right. Like if you were you if you ever knew about tape trading, it's like mm-hmm. the DVD scene and wrestling made everything huge. And then yeah, with the internet being so you know new like it was, and, and that's when they started really putting out a lot of these uh, horror movies or all movies on DVD. So definitely, and I think the, I think the reason I started collecting a lot again these Blu-rays when I finally started up again is because I looked back and realized like I've always collected. But whether it's, like, moving or just, like, lending stuff out or, like, somebody just, like, taking off with all my movies or whatever condition it could be. Yeah. It's like, I've always had somewhat of a movie collection. And okay. I think once I got, like, a decent job a couple of years ago, you know, real good day, day gig or whatever, well, second shift now. But, you know, I could organize, like, when I'm saving my bills or whatever. I had, like, the extra chunk of money to have a little fun. Mm-hmm. I just bought a couple Blu-rays, and then right, yeah. But so the, of the hunt became everything. So you made a you made a conscious decision to start collecting Blu-rays almost exclusively at some point, then, or do you? Yeah. Or is it totally exclusive at this point? Pretty much, I don't even buy 4K. It's a better deal. Like I got a, <laughs> I'm OCD like that. I'm like, gotta keep the continuity i just bought uh that new efw film which i believe had the guy from like hobo from with a shotgun pretty cool but like the 4k was cheaper than the blu-ray but i bought the blu-ray for two dollars more because i was like well man if i don't own like say this movie or that movie on 4k why why would i have this one in there i don't know it's just (laughs) madness right hey i know i understand i mean i collect I mean, I, I, I honestly have a pretty good DVD movie collection of my own and VHS before that. But, unfortunately, when I got divorced, that's, uh, she took most of the, the horror stuff because um, that's really all that she watches. We, I mean, we, have, we had excuse me, a lot of movies, but she took most of the horror stuff. I really couldn't complain. But, um, Damn. Yeah, I know. That, hey, that horror. <laughs> right. Nobody didn't go too far with that joke. <laughs> no. That was not a good joke. It's stupid. <laughs> hey, but when it comes to DVDs, man, like, I, I will grab a couple here or there because you can't get this one on Blu ray. You can't get this Sir. one on Blu ray. Ah. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, I know. I'm, I mean, I'm sure I have some too that you can't get on Blu ray yet. But uh, that's, that's kind of the that's kind of the direction I've gone with like collecting lately because I, I got like about 250 horror movies on Blu-ray. And when you really get that far into the rabbit hole, you start looking at like exploitation and just like right, just terrible movies. We're like, never watch this. Right, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe I should check it out. <laughs> <laughs> so, how how many? I mean, you may you may know the number. I don't know, but uh, just an estimation. If you don't, how many? Uh, Blu-rays do you think you own at this point? Uh, oh. I wrote on my dry erase board. I rounded up. I counted it the other day. I was like, man, what's the exact number? I'm like, ah, make it 250. The flex. Flex. <laughs> Not that I mean to. And I was like, probably around 250 Blu-rays, like, for horror. Okay. Probably close. I probably got about a buck fifty, 150 other movies. Okay. So that's 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 all Blu-rays or that's all together? All Blu-ray, you, brother. Wow. All Blu-ray. Wow. It's been years I've been kind of collecting this, you know. Yeah. I don't really uh, I don't live by any friends or nothing. Okay. I I just you know I see them on usually when life was normal we would meet every weekend and go wrestle and we're getting paid to wrestle too so it's like when I was at home I'm just pretty much working and coming home and watching movies, just kind of hanging out, you know? So that's right. kind of where it started back up again. And then that's how the channel started, really, too, was that I just... I'm not going to hit up Nick Baker and talk about street trash. <laughs> I have no <laughs> why, idea what why I'm not? talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I just kind of wanted to, like, talk to somebody. Like, not even talk to somebody. I was like, most of my videos are me ranting out about a movie for 20 minutes. God bless the souls to watch them. <laughs> I watch them all. Not all of them. I watch them all. <laughs> Thank you, man. I, I really <laughs> no appreciate that. Yeah, but, no, I, I mean, there's, uh, I, I can honestly say that I think I, I think I've actually watched every one of yours, and I watched the, the, the whole thing. Um, thanks, man. 
Now, do you ever get to the right. point? Like I mean, we talked about this last time on the last show, and 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 I'm definitely uh-huh. at the, I'm definitely at this point. But have you gotten to the point where you just have so much stuff that you have run out of room and and think that you need to start selling stuff, or or have you sold stuff already? Uh, not yet. Like for example, when the new box out of Friday the Thirteenth comes out, I wouldn't mind getting rid of the one I have already first eight movies and stuff like that, but I bought this giant-ass Amazon shelf, and I actually officially just filled up uh, four shelves. Okay. And I got, I got like, books and stuff in, in the middle, and then there's another four on the way down, so I can fit another almost 600 movies on the bottom. But I, I made it, when I first started collecting, I didn't just grab everything, mm-hmm. but I've learned to get better about, about that, like, I used to like subscribe to like horror pack and stuff like that, and send you mystery movies. But I would get like, I'll show you right now. Well, okay, so I've watched those videos where you unbox those, and you, you've kind of mentioned in those if it's something that you really weren't interested in that you w- that we were thinking about maybe selling those on eBay. Damn, look at this. So, look at this. <laughs> look at this one. Did you watch? Did you watch it? Oh no. Hell no. <laughs> I don't want this. Look in the back. It's like this. Sci-fi, Vin Diesel adventure. I was like, I literally don't care about this at all. I go. So okay, so so you haven't gotten to the point where you sold any of the, tried to sell any of those on eBay yet, or anything? Uh, no. I'll just for the sake of the collection, I'll, I'll probably keep them until I actually need the room. And, okay. You know, yeah. I never was much of an online seller or anything like that. I, I would rather probably just give them away, like with giveaways or something, like in my videos, like hey. Yeah. This or that, you win a prize. Like, I, mean, I don't really, I already paid for it. Right. So, uh, obviously, well, I mean, you and I know this. I don't know if, if people watching know this, but, um, you know, stuff, they only print so many, and then certain stuff will be out of print for a long time. So, which, I, would you know, like, what uh, Blu-ray or DVD uh, that you own would be worth oh. worth the most? Uh, not necessarily. I would say it would be probably non-horror, but probably my Scarface collection is worth the most of anything I own. I don't think I really have much that's out of print. Okay. I, I got in the game pretty late. I mean, there's some that are like going out of print, but not yet. I'll tell you what, what the... the, the Creme de la Creme, or how we said the Belle of the Ball. Creme de, creme de la one, Creme. Yeah, yeah, the one Blu-ray uh, you would want to look out for, they're re-releasing Dawn of the Dead, the original on Blu-ray soon, in October. Okay. A couple weeks after the Friday the 13th. So the original one that came out, it got like one of the first releases when Blu-ray came out, that's worth a lot of money. And if you, you ever heard of uh, when Peter Jackson was doing horror and he did uh, Dead Alive? Yeah, I, have, I own it. I own it on, on, on Blu-ray. D- no, 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 on DVD. That, oh, that's fair enough. You can get it on DVD still, but that Blu-ray is worth a lot of money. Okay. Or that how the Halloween box set through Scream Factory is over a thousand dollars. Oh yeah, you were just talking about that on uh, yeah on your latest uh, video, right? Yeah. Yeah. YouTube forward slash c forward slash killer pizza videos. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so. Like which which movie would you say is something that you're waiting for? Like a, a holy grail, if you will, uh, something that uh, you're just waiting for to come out on on Blu-ray. Probably that uh, Dawn of the Dead. Okay. Re- uh, I mean, not the remake, the uh, Blu-ray 4K, because it's actually gonna have, it's gonna come in a box set and has three different versions. One is like the theatrical, one's the uncut, and one is the uh, what is it? Dargeno, what's the guy who did uh, Zombie? Dario Argeno? Yeah, yeah. So you know that the original Dawn of the Dead was kind of advertised the original Zombie in, in uh, yeah. Italy. Yeah, so they have his version too. Oh, That's really? Gonna be all Italian. It's going to be all in Italian. Oh, there okay. Version wow. With American subtitles over it. It's like a bunch of special features. Okay. Uh, yeah, that I've been waiting for that one really because that's probably my favorite George Romero movie. Really? Yeah, Day of the Dead grows on me. Certain times I watch it because 
Captain Rhodes. Okay. It's misunderstood and awesome. The whole movie is great. The Dawn of the Dead. See, I'm 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 more of a Night of the Living Dead guy, but um, but that was one of the original ones that I saw that uh, okay. terrified me, and uh, so I, I I got a soft spot in my heart for that one. But um, ain't it funny how how it works out that way with horror movies or any yeah. movie yeah. or content like that? It's like you see it at a certain time. Like I have a soft spot for demonic toys, and that <laughs> movie sucks, but I love it. Okay, well, I bought that on your recommendation. I bought it on oh, on DVD, but I haven't I haven't given it. <coughs> but that's oh. that's uh <coughs> that's full moon though, right? That or yeah, and I don't like a lot of full moon. It's like see, I didn't mind the Puppet Masters, um, and and some of the other ones. You watch my uh, Sleepaway Camp uh, review I just put out. I when I put I, I put Puppet Master on blast. <laughs> No, <laughs> no, I, 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 I don't I, think I got to I that mentioned, part. I mentioned Sleepaway Camp, where like this is like kind of a known horror movie, but it's not on the same level as like upper echelon horror movies, you know, the franchise ones. But then it's like not even secondary, like high t- tier, you know. It's like, and I said, how do more people know about? How do more casual horror fans know about Puppet Masters and Sleepaway Camp? Well, and that's a pretty valid point, man. It it is, but one, of, but here's here's the thing. Uh, and I didn't, if, if I did watch that part, I didn't catch it, but, um, here's the thing. They used to show those puppet masters on the USA network and the sci-fi channel. Yeah, you're right. And you know, you can't really show sleepaway camp. I mean, I guess you could, but you would have to, you would, you would have to ruin, (laughs) you'd have to ruin the ending. Yeah. How do you explain the ending? Exactly. Um. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I don't, I don't know how you could, you could get away with that, without just totally botching the ending. If you, if you wanted to show it on one of those stations. But. Yeah, you really couldn't. <laughs> like, uh, you heard like with the movie Scarface. I don't know if you're a fan. I know we're talking horror, but when they put that on TV, they would replace Buck with Cantaloupe. <laughs> <laughs> like, For real? Like what? You know what? Yeah. I, so. I, I know that I saw. That? I know that I saw Scarface as a kid, but. Uh, but it's been a long time. Hey, <laughs> um, no biggie. So what, about the horror, baby. So what made you uh, decide to start doing the YouTube channel? I just, uh, once I started kind of collecting again randomly, like I said, I, and I'm humble about it. I don't have the best job in the world. But I, get, you know, I grew up poor as fuck, and I got a decent job, and, I got my money and my savings and everything straight, and I had a little extra bread. I don't go out like I did in my early 20s or anything like that. Right. So I just, like, I'll, I'll buy a couple movies off Amazon. And then, you know, I throw them in, watch them. I'm kind of, like, reminiscing on, you know, my love for horror flicks. And then I start looking around, grab a couple more. Then I start kind of, like, looking up stuff online and kind of seeing there's a community for it. And I enjoyed watching people talk about, Movies and I and like I said earlier, I uh, I don't live by many of my friends. I just pretty much hang out on the weekends when we have shows for the most part. Mm-hmm. And you know, I just want to talk horror flicks. And right. So I just decided to do it. I did like a movie collection when I first started buying, and it was like first person view. And Nick Baker is actually the one who told me. He says, set up a cool background and you know sit in front of the camera. Mm-hmm talk about the movie so I, I give a big uh, shout out to Nick everyone knows Nick Baker or Jack Taron so he kind of like pushed me in that way and, and, and me and Nick came up a long time you know we always okay. we grew up as kids we used to fucking make movies and shit like that all the time so he's like, okay. yeah bro you know he supported me with that mm-hmm. and it just got fun you know I don't do it to, like have a million views or make money or followers or anything like that it's just kind of like Something that keeps me busy after work. Right. Well, you do a good job, and I, I do, I really do enjoy watching your videos. So, just uh, appreciate it. Yeah. So, uh, is there is there a movie that you think that? Uh, well, I mean, you would know. Uh, which one would you say that you've probably watched the most times? Uh, if you have one. 
Halloween, probably. Okay. Or uh, probably the first three George Romero movies and the remake. Or actually, I have the real answer now that I think about it. <laughs> Return of the Living Dead. Okay. Yeah, you know probably what? Probably what I've watched the most. Yeah, you know what? You, I, I had totally forgot. I mean, I have it, and I've watched it quite a few times yeah. too. But I, I totally forgot about it, and and you brought it up. But when you were talking about the Dawn of the Dead remake, um, and I said something about that introducing us to running zombies, and you mentioned that one, and I, I had forgot about that. That, uh, that is that you that, that said that? That was. I didn't recognize. I didn't recognize like the name. It didn't like you know. I mean, I could identify it as like. Oh yeah, you. I don't. I don't know what the screen name was. I thought he was trolling me or something. No, no, <laughs> I no. Thought, I thought I came off as a dick when I replied. But no, no. I just. I. I wasn't even thinking about it. Um, I just forgot about it. But. Um, I appreciate you commenting, man. That, that's the <laughs> funnest part, really. Oh yeah, you no, know. no, no problem. I mean, I try to comment on almost all your stuff, but. Uh, but yeah, I just. Uh, yeah, that one I just didn't even think about. Uh, uh, what would you say? Do you do you watch uh, any of the older horror films like like Universal or or like Hammer? Uh, I don't mind Hammer films as much. I must admit, I don't watch much of either. I know. Okay. I don't. I'm a bad guy. <laughs> no, no. But you can find pretty cool sets of these, so I've been kind of like wanting to dabble in. Um, okay. I mean. I, I mean, you know, I, I can't blame you. I mean, when I, was, when I was a kid, going back to wrestling real quick, but when I was a kid, I couldn't watch, like, the old stuff in, until I was, like, older. Exactly. I couldn't appreciate it at all. It, it, just, it just seemed so different, even, though if it, even if it was only, like, a few years before that. But, you know, a lot of that stuff was older stuff on those, on those VHS tapes that you'd get. At least when I was growing up, oh, it, yeah. it might have been different, you know, for you. But like, when I was growing up, there'd just be a compilation of different matches, and so they'd show like older stuff, and and it was just like I, I just could not get into it. I didn't get it. Um, so I can under, I can understand that. That I mean that that probably somewhat applies to to movies as well. It definitely. But, uh, that that's why movies from like. The, the early 70s and stuff like that, they really hold up. Like, say, like, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's like, that's in the range, close to where, like, I think it's too old or whatever. But, you know, cream rises at the top. Maybe I just haven't been exposed to the right stuff. But in time, you know, I'm a movie guy. I'll eventually get to them. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, you might already answer this, but uh, so what would you say your favorite series of all time would be then. The easy answer is the Halloween series. Okay. But it's actually not as consistent as it's made out to be more iconic. If that makes sense. Yeah. A selfish pleasure. I actually really enjoy like the Child's Play series because I actually like Part Three as well. So like the first three are really good. Cut out the comedy stuff a little bit and then the two reboot ones. Even even the remake and then the two before that, Colton. Uh, oh, what's the other one? Curse. I like both of those. So the but if I'm gonna the most what's that? the most recent one you like the most recent one. I did. I did like it. I, actually, I like I, that they. I actually loved I it. You, yeah, me too. <laughs> I, did you get the same thing that I got where everybody thought you were gonna just like shit on it before you even watched it? It's yeah. like oh yes. a chance. Yeah. I like the way they mixed the technology <laughs> with like the way the doll acts. Yeah, I did too. And then, and then, you know, obviously they make him more of a sympathetic character. Which is strange. In this yeah, one, I know. The polar opposite. Exactly. It's the polar opposite. Charles Lee Ray is literally a, a child murderer or something. <laughs> right. Oh, my God. Yeah, and then uh, Aubrey Plaza or whatever, she did a good job. And the kid that played Andy, I oh. didn't like him being like an older kid at first, but he did great too. And then the characters were relatable. Yeah. Know. And Mark and Mark Hamill is the voice. He had to, he did a he did a good enough job. Yeah. Um. So I mean, there was 
there was definitely some dark comedy in that one. I mean, there was a couple of times where I was cracking up, like uh, with the head on with the head on the dresser. Yeah, and then when he wakes up, when all that's <laughs> yeah, and then then when they were in the store and you know everything just started becoming chaotic. Uh, oh, my kid almost had a panic attack. <laughs> Yeah, pretty crazy. So what what would you say your favorite horror comedy is? Well, first I I can't let it end by saying that Child's Play is my favorite franchise. Oh, okay. So I'll Sorry. just say I'll just say no, no, I don't. We just talked about it, so I don't have to say much more about it. I'll just say the first three: George Romero, like kind of the zombie trilogy, because yeah. one came out in the sixties, seventies, and eighties. They each depicted each step into like the madness of the zombie invasion, where night was kind of like. The outbreak started, and they don't have no idea what's going on. Dawn of the Dead is like, as the news companies and the police, and pure chaos in the streets trying to figure out what the fuck is happening, where Day of the Dead was like, kind of like, more like, they're in that fucking shelter, and we're like, human become, humans become the real zombies in a way, and it's just like, and if you look at, look at it, night, day, dawn, it's like that, is it implied that this is over one night? Clearly not, but it's a fun title for the franchise, which I hate. I can't put all three of them, or all, or two of them, because I don't own Dawn yet. I can't put them next to each other alphabetically. It's a different name. Damn it! I digress. No. <laughs> okay. Well, what? What about? Uh, what about the ones that came after? Because he started churning out s- some. What? Uh, what was, what's the? I can't even think of the name of the the one with John Leguizamo. Um, no, it was uh, Land of the Dead. Land of the Dead. After, right. There they was did Diary of the Dead. Survival of the Dead, I think. I liked Land of the Dead. I did. And I, and I apologize if I dissed the remake of Dawn of the Dead earlier, too, because that was a pretty good movie. Yeah. Um, but, you know. Yeah, I think, yeah, so, I, yeah, you're right. It was, like, survive, Survival of the Dead or something like that. Yeah, or, Survival of Di- uh, Diary. diary. <clears throat> I mean, th- those... There might have been more. Obviously, they're not the quality of the first. I, I'll even say the first four because I'll put Land of the Dead up yeah, there, up there good. with the first three. Um, but then they start getting like they start getting like Rave of the Dead style, like National Lampoon just pumping out <laughs> zombie movies. Like right, right. I zombie mean, movies have some of the worst low budget like versions, especially like from Walking Dead time. Like shame, man. They do, and I. Because they are my favorites. I, I've probably um, seen, yeah. You know, there's there's something about them. I mean, you got to really work hard to screw up a zombie movie. Um, it's it's not that hard of a formula, uh, really. But there's a lot of... Even them walking slow. Even them walking slow, it's like, uh, well, they have numbers. It's like... Yeah. And then you kind of get, like, in the isolation kind of environment. And then yeah. There's always kind of, like, drama between the people... But there is a lot of there is a lot of low budget crap too, though. You mentioned my favorite horror comedy, and now that we're talking about zombies, because it is a zombie movie, which I was gonna make a YouTube video. I still could, where I really want to draw the line between what is horror comedy and what's comedy horror. Okay. Because I still put a lot of kind of comedy horror movies in my horror collection. For me, I think it's the drama they raise at one point in the gore. Like if the gore is good, like thing for a kid, it's in comedy, but. To mention that, because I was going to relate zombies to, like, today's world, especially when this virus first came out. It's like a bunch of zombies, you know? Right. So I, I reviewed I reviewed Shaun of the Dead. It yeah. felt so similar to, like, how we were living. Exactly. And that's easily my favorite horror comedy. Yeah. Nothing beats that. That's... Yeah. I, I, I'd have to think about it, but that's definitely up there with me. I mean, that's, def, that's just one of my favorite horror movies, really, all around. Me but, too. But I lean... I seem to lean towards comedy horror, somewhat horror, too, yep. horror horror comedy. I mean, we've talked about it. My favorite, probably still my favorite horror movie of all time is American Werewolf in London. And, uh, you know, there's definitely comedy in that one, too. Uh, yeah, I meant, I meant to watch it, actually, last time you mentioned it. I feel like I pulled it off my shelf and everything. I never watched it. Uh, yeah, I th- I th- yeah, I thought you said you were going to, but that's all right. All right, so we mentioned like some of the bad zombie movies. Uh, what is one of, if not the worst horror film you've ever seen? Oh, I'm glad you asked. It's <laughs> actually right next to me. <clears throat> now this will get some controversy. 
from a lot of people. The worst horror movie I've ever seen. Yeah. Grab another right now. We'll go one at a time. <laughs> okay. Microwave. Microwave Massacre. <laughs> have you seen this? I have not. So it's not. Oh my god. So it's just it's just bad. It's not it's not so bad. It's good. It's just bad bad. No, it's like trauma production bad, but it's not funny at all. <laughs> there's it, no gore, it, and it drags on forever. I there's no there's no gore. Are they trying to be humorous or no? I don't think so. <laughs> it's so, got some famous comedian in here. I don't I don't know about. I didn't think he was funny at all. Uh, Jackie Vernon. Who Jackie is, Vernon's the lead. Jackie Vernon? Yeah. You know it says, what? It says you know legendary what? stand-up comedian, I Jackie j- Vernon. I just looked him up because he was in an episode of uh, Night Gallery. And uh, he played like a genie or something, and I was like, who is this guy? And he did a good job on that show. And then I looked him up, and I saw that he was in that movie, Microwave Massacre. All right, what's what's your other pick? Oh, one second. Sorry, guys. <laughs> got to make sure I got the right one. Oh, I... Damn it. I'm not quick enough. I don't want to hold up this, this deal. No, but no, I think th- that don't worry about it. It's, it's either this or Killer Work or yeah, Death Spot or Killer Workout. I'm pretty <laughs> sure this is the one. Death Spot. Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. This movie is so bad. Really? It's not what you think. It's okay. like, look at this guy. Okay. It becomes like a like some gypsy like genie comes out for some reason. Really? Like, yeah, this is the one. <laughs> yeah. Killer Are... Workout was okay, I think. Are they along the same lines? This same. is just 80 cheese. 80s cheese. A lot of people would like it. It wasn't for me, though. Damn, I wish you. Would, I wish I would have known you were going to ask me. There's a lot of <laughs> shitty ones I got. There was one about, I can't remember the name of it. I wish I could find it real quick. It was just like about some like crotch rocket riders. I mean, you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> like souped up motorcycles. Yeah. And they were like, being slashed off on a beach, on like a neon soaked beach. Oh, really? And I thought it was going to be so cool. I was like, right up my alley, 80s, neon, you know, right, right. a slasher. Yeah. And it just turned into like some weird mystery movie about like a <laughs> kidnapping of the guy's sister. And they had like dirty cops involved. And I was like, and then all the kills sucked. And then, <laughs> then the killer got revealed at the end. And it was really obvious. Like, really? Or no, no, it, it's that it wasn't obvious, but it just, it wasn't like cool. You're like, oh, <laughs> oh okay. that guy, like the librarian, like, so, so what are like some of the? Well, actually, do you even have any uh, recommendations along the lines of being so bad it's good? Ah, oh, there's so many. <laughs> See, I like, <laughs> like movies. Demonic toys. I like demonic movies toys like for one. Okay, I'll have to. I'll have to give that. I, I have it sitting right there by my by my Blu-ray player, but I gotta take a look. Well, here's one. This, people are going to hate me. But, I mean, this is being nice because this is clearly a good movie. My name is Bruce. It's so bad it's good. I have not seen that. Yeah, even though I'm a, I'm a huge Bruce Campbell fan, I have not seen that one yet. <clears throat> uh, don't mean to be, like, looking the other way during this. Oh, that's all right. Here's one everyone hates. Well, not Demon Knight. I meant to grab the second one, Bardello Blood. Bardello Blood. I saw. I yeah, saw I've both of those. Bad. I've seen both of those at the theater. Really? Yeah. And uh, you know, they're they are what they are. I mean, they. I think they were trying to make Dennis Miller a, a movie star at the time. And oh, I heard he was a dick on the set too. <laughs> oh, probably. Oh, I'm sure he was. You He's, seen this one? I'm you know what? This is so good. So bad that it's good. Just, mm, I I don't know. It, it, it sounds familiar, but I can't say that I have for sure. Damn! I, I wish I could. Uh, I wish I would have known these two questions were coming. Cause <laughs> I could have definitely just like shit on a bunch of movies. But I'm actually going to start a new segment on my YouTube channel. That's going to be kind of like bad movies that are so bad they're good. Okay. Because I've been wondering if my uh, classic reviews are too long mm. for like a casual viewer. And then I and I don't do a lot of bad movies I watch, right? Because I don't really want to be disrespectful on my channel towards the director, writer, the actors, whatever. It's just not kind of what I was going for. 
but I was thinking I'm going to do a new series called, like, Blind Buy Reviews. Okay. It's like a movie I've never seen before. Yeah. And I just check it out. And I would do more, like, probably six-minute, six six to eight-minute videos. Okay. Where I, you know, I'd just kind of go over it, and here's what I like, here's what I don't like, is it worth it to uh, buy and watch. Okay. Yeah, that'd be cool. I'll check those out, too. Um, now, you just recently did a... A video about creep show what uh what is your favorite horror television show uh well, tales from the crypt definitely okay definitely you know i never watched that I, I, too much I, I, damn yeah i didn't watch it much as a kid we didn't have hbo but you know when we when we could get the channel for free and yeah the movies i just talked about like everyone knew the crypt keeper and, Right. There's a lot of like new horror shows. Oh yeah, but I, I don't, I don't, I don't really watch a lot of them. I know Shutter's got some good stuff. I love the Creep Show series. A lot of people hated it, but it's like, it's kind of like a matter of like beggars can't be choosers versus like we deserve better. It's like ah, just meet, meet, meet in the middle and have fun with it. It was pretty good. Now, but, did did you watch uh, Scream Queens? I didn't. Okay, I got to, I got to say, I, I just got to give it a little. Uh, some, some props here because little Hogan, little Hogan dust. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> it's uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Because for a show on regular network TV, I thought it was I thought it was very well done. I mean, it's not like there was a ton of gore or anything like that, but but it was and, and again it was definitely more humorous. But uh, I, I actually bought the first season, and I know they did another season. I never watched the second season, but I don't think it lasted. I don't even think I made it through. But the first season yeah. is definitely worth checking out. And you can probably get it for, like, cheap right now. Um, Damn. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check that out because when it comes to TV series, here's a little insight here. I don't dedicate it all to Blu-ray when it comes to TV shows. Okay. Because those bitches, those bitches are expensive. Right, exactly. <laughs> if I, get the, whole series, if I yeah. get the whole series for 100 bucks, I'm already paying too much. So I'm like, yeah. but still, I'm like, the whole show, bet, you know? Right. I heard about that one for sure, man. Okay. Have you ever uh, have you ever seen? I know I did a review for it at one point. Have you ever seen Body Bags, like the movie? Is that a is that a uh, uh, John Carpenter and Tony Hooper? It's, it's an anthology, yeah. right? I know that I've seen it. I know that I did see it. I but I'm drawing a blank of, of what it was actually for, uh, about. But. John John Carpenter was like the crypt keeper, but he was like a dead body. Okay. Had his body bag in the morgue, and he was like giving all the jokes. I I and know had, like the. I, I know the that I've gas seen. station. It's not ringing a bell, but I've I know, but I know that yeah. I've seen it. I know that I've seen it because I mean it's probably uh-huh. it's probably the same as you. But you know, when you're when you're a kid and you're hanging out with your friends, what do you do when you go to the video store? You look for the most screwed up VHS cover in the horror section that you could find, and that's what you watch. And I saw some decent movies that way, and I saw some horrible movies. That way, one of them that I remember, like we were at a party at my buddy's house, and we rented uh, "Don't Go Into the Woods." Did you ever see that? <laughs> I just remember that movie. So people got bored with it very quickly. Oh, hold up! People got bored with it very quickly, and I just remember that song at the end. Yes. This one. Yes. I let me. I don't mean to cut you off. No, go ahead. But my, my, my last little, I told you I just bought VFW. Yeah. I bought the first Cheech and Chong movies and some other horror flicks. But mm-hmm. I was looking up, like, the video nasties, like the 76, 86 video nasties. And each one I went through, they gave a description. And anything I was interested in, I kind of looked on Amazon and see if I had it. Mm-hmm. I found this one. This okay. has been, like, laying on my bed the whole <laughs> weekend because I've been meaning to watch it. You know, this, it, was gonna be my, this is going to be my first blind buy buy uh, review because I was like, I heard this movie's fucked up. It's, but I heard it's really shitty too. It it, it wasn't the best, but um, I I don't know. You know, I, awesome man. But going back and watching some movies that I thought sucked, I guess I've gained sort of an appreciation for them. So maybe it's not as bad. I mean, I've some I've seen some people that say they love it, um, but I just remember the the end credits. I heard the ending scene's pretty crazy. I just remember the end credits song. And it just seemed like it was going on and on and on and on. It seemed like it went on forever because, like I said, we were, we were at a party and it was just like you go through the room and the song was playing. You go through the room again, you go into another room, you come through the room. 
I don't know. You'll see what I mean if if you watch it. I I, I mean it, it might not be like that, but uh, but that's how it seemed at the, at the time. So I bought, the, I bought this one. I bought this one instead of uh, we'll we'll drink your blood. Yeah, a little too <laughs> much for me right now. Hey, you mentioned uh, video covers that would freak you out as a kid. Yeah, I absolutely fucking love this movie. This is the artwork on the Blu-ray, but you remember this is the VHS cover for Demon in Italy. Uh, no, I don't remember that. Don't. Look I, how creepy that is. Yeah, that's the the demon that comes out of her body. Okay, you can see that in this. It was like an Italian print VHS. They were like, why is it look? No different than the styrofoam right. tucked into it. You know what I mean? The big old case. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never rented it either. Oh, year. okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't <laughs> rem- remember that off the top of my head. I just I remember like the Blu-ray version of it, but uh, you know. Have you they, seen it? Uh, I know I've seen Demons, but I don't. Okay. But I mean, I again I don't remember because a lot of these I haven't seen since I was a ki- a kid, and so I just good, man. don't remember. So good. Uh, so okay. Speaking of that, not only disturbing covers, but what would you say is either the weirdest or most disturbing horror movie that you've ever seen? I know we, you and I were just talking about one that you were going to review. I don't know if you did yet. Well, I probably have the next... some of the most disturbing. I probably have, yeah, I was going to say, I probably have <laughs> some of the most disturbing horror movies on my shelf. And I don't know if I'll ever watch them. The Necromatic, <laughs> Necromantic 1 and 2. That's, a, that's the one we them. were just talking about. You watched them or no? I heard that. No, no. I heard there was a little bit of like animal abuse in them, so I kind of don't know how to feel about it now. Because I'm like, that's why I don't watch any like okay. animal movie or anything like that. But right. We're talking. I'd say I got two for you. I'd say the original Hellraiser, because the premise alone, the gore, and like the whole story of like the uncle coming back to life, like how bloody and gory it is. Second one for that matter too. Fucked up. Yeah. Or I'd say I mentioned it earlier. I'd say Street Trash. Yeah. I. More than that. Plus the they have the rape scene that was all fucked up. Like that's a really messed up movie. And uh, one more I just thought of that I definitely don't own. I don't like the remakes of Hills Have Eyes. Okay. Yeah, I didn't either. Because they like I didn't they like kill it. like the mom while they like rape the mom in front of the kid, and it's just like, man, right. are you just doing shit to get a reaction at this point? Right. I didn't like that stuff. I didn't. But. No, I agree with you. I didn't like it either. Um, so speaking of animal abuse, uh, one movie that was banned for a long time, at, at least in the U.S., do you own the Cannibal Holocaust movies or Cannibal Fur? I, wa- hmm? I want to watch it so bad because everything besides the animal deaths, I could get down. You know? I, mean, I it's... love the found footage idea. I've never watched it, though. Okay. It's tempting sometimes to at least buy it because the, the packaging, I think your Arrow video is like pretty tight Yeah. for a collector's yeah. aspect. But, oh, uh, yeah, I, I can't do that stuff. I'll eat, I'll eat uh, meat all day long, but right. I'm, not, I'm not a hunter or nothing like that. Well, I, I, I agree with you. I mean, just knowing what it was when I was watching it, I mean, there's, uh, um, you know, I, I could watch gore and, or I used to be able to anyway watch it with no problem yeah. if I knew that it wasn't real. But watching those movies, because uh, actually my ex bought it, and um, we watched it, and you know there there's a couple scenes. I mean it's it's not as bad as you might think. Yeah, but, um, you could cover up. Yeah. While yeah. that happens, but yeah. All right, so we did not talk about this yet, but <clears throat> I'm pretty sure it's one of your favorite movies of all time, and. Uh, the Shining. I believe you've mentioned that before. As well, yeah. I it's mean, not. It's not yeah. one of your favorites. Oh, it is definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, is that your Jack favorite? Terrence. Is that your favorite uh, Stephen King adaptation? Uh, I mean, probably. Okay. Yeah, definitely, probably. Did you I mean, like Jack Nicholson's performance as uh, Jack Terrence? Yeah. Now I'm not a huge Shining fan, but I loved. I actually really loved Doctor Sleep. Surprisingly, I, I did. I, I I I probably wouldn't even have saw it, but then I started seeing the reviews. Have you watched Doctor Sleep yet? No, no. You got I, I ha- You should I have check this it weird out. Thing about. I have this weird thing about new horror. I don't know. I'm weird. You have, you have a weird thing about what? Have, I'm weird about like new horror. Like. You should check it out, man. Because uh, I. Maybe. 
I mean, every okay. I'll just say this: I work with a guy. He's obsessed with The Shining. It's his favorite movie. He did not want to see it, and I, I talked him into seeing it, and he really liked it. Uh, everybody that I recommended that movie to has ended up has ended up really liking it. Um, there is a three hour director's cut out there, just to let you know. And I just got that on well, I just got that on Blu ray too. If I watch this, you're gonna have to watch one I suggest. Well, it depends on what it is. I'm gonna pick the worst movie I know. <laughs> what which I'll one? Have to, I'll, have to, I'll have to think about it. <laughs> Probably that one about the beach, but <laughs> uh, what would you say? Just just real quick, I just I'm just gonna fire off a few genres at you. Or some like sub right. sub sub genres, real quick. Just off, right, the, off, off the top of your head, give me your favorite version of these, okay? What mm-hmm. is your favorite haunting or ghost film? Haunting or ghost film? Damn, oh, this is a bad one. <laughs> Starting off with a bang here. I don't really watch many movies like that. Okay, I'd say. Well, if maybe, you don't, you don't. I'd say The Fog, maybe. A good one. Okay, that that, that counts. That counts. How about uh, Werewolf? American Werewolf in London. The oh. Howling is really good, though. But come on, Howling's good. Uh, there's one called Bad Moon that I love. If you've never seen it, um, I can check that one out. That I I really like that one a lot too. Um, Dog Soldiers is okay too. Uh, how about best vampire film? Oh. Uh, sh- Lost Boys. Okay, yeah, that's definitely up there. Generic, but me too. Uh, you know what though? No, it's not. I I wouldn't say so. I I'd say it's uh it definitely stands on its own on its own of being somewhat unique. Really, I mean I, I wouldn't. And I, say... I like a lot of uh punk rock, British punk rock. You know, they kind of have that rock and roll little yeah. Lives of vampires, which is kind of cool, right? Yeah. Uh, and the last one, uh, the subgenre of animals. What are the best? Sharks, alligators, frogs, or bunnies? Because have you ever seen Night of the Lepus? <laughs> no. Uh, I don't know the animals. I, I like more like, I do more like creatures and stuff. I mean, well, obviously Jaws would be number one. Like animals, but shark movies have a really bad reputation. They do. Now, I'd say pumpkin head. Sure, yeah, why not? Or tremors. <laughs> yeah, why not? Uh, yeah, there were sandworms, right? I could have uh, bought I could have bought the complete collection of tremors for the same price as just buying only the first movie. I think I might have it. I I, I guess Yeah, I guess I only I was like I got Yeah, I, go, I don't I don't want the rest. Yeah, I got I got some kind of collection of the Tremors movies also. Hey, uh, you like uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space? Uh I own it. Uh, it's, it's, oh, it's okay. You haven't watched it? I've, oh. No, I've, I've watched it. It's not my favorite. Okay. Yeah, um, cool. hey, guess what though? We're almost out of time already. So, Damn. yeah. Thank you for being here and sorry about the technical difficulties in the beginning. Um, what can we look for? Plug your, your YouTube channel again. And, uh, what can we look for there on the future? In the future? I should say. Oh, it's uh, thank you. It's it's youtube.com forward slash the the letter C forward slash killer pizza videos. Um, now that things are opening up again, you know, obviously I'm gonna keep doing the same videos I've been doing with Blu ray updates and reviews. I'm gonna do the new uh, blind by review, but now that things are opening up, we're gonna do more vlogs, uh, uh, going to like the wrestling shows or whatever. And I'm gonna have some challenge videos and stuff like that. And uh, me and Nick Baker got some stuff in the works. So uh, just keep checking the uh, well my personal page and the Orion on TV page, <clears throat> and thank you to them as well. I never thank them enough, but uh, thank you. Yeah, thank for, you guys. Thanks for having for, me. For uh, letting us have this forum. So uh, again, just uh, check, and uh, we'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.